Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about how to create delays in Zapier for more than 30 days. Now Zapier's official response in this is to create a calendar event in the future. I'm going to show you a better way. Now Zapier has a step for this. In, in Zapier there is a step called delay, but the delay step is restricted to only 30 days in the future. Now Zapier's official response for this is instead of creating a delay step, do a create calendar event step. Uh, and then you would need to create a second automation that would look for that specific calendar event at some point in the future and then trigger subsequent actions from that. Now we do things a little bit differently here at X-Ray. Instead of using the delay step, um, we are actually putting that information inside of an operational database. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be using Airtable. But this tutorial is going to show you how to get around that 30 day limit for your delays and hopefully open up a whole new world of automation potential for you inside of your operational database. Now, if you haven't heard of an operational database before, don't worry about it. Um, it is something really for a little bit more advanced automation users. Um, and it gives you tremendous amount of flexibility inside of all your automations. So this particular tutorial is not going to be diving deep into the operational database. Instead, we're just going to focus on getting around that 30 day limit. Uh, but if you're interested in a little bit more of the technical stuff, links, of course, down below. So, all right, let's get into it and start diving into how we can get around this 30 day limit. So um, let's get into Zapier. So here we have a new email uh, that comes in and we want to uh, delay for a certain amount of time. Now, if you did this, uh, you know, I want to delay this for 60 days and um, we'll test and review this action. Boom. Uh, dates cannot be more than a month in the future. So this is the problem that we're trying to solve today. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this step because we're not going to use this at all right now. And just looking at the new email, it could be any new email set up. And here we are with uh, some information. Hey, Matthew, uh, thanks for reaching out to X-Ray, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. So this is an email that we got from our test data here, uh, an inbound email that we've received. And then we're going to go into creating a Airtable record. So if you're familiar with Airtable, awesome. This will be very familiar for you. Um, if you're not familiar with Airtable, really it's Google Sheets on steroids. That's, that's the best way to think about it. Uh, you have tremendous amount of flexibility and we're going to get into actually showing you some of the things inside of Airtable right now. So these are the email contacts. Um, looks just like a spreadsheet, right? And you have the email address, a name of a person, the date received, the next contact date. This is the thing that we're going to use and the email body. So uh, as we go through this here, we'll go into right, creating uh, a, a record inside of that Airtable database that I just showed you. It's going to be inside the tutorial base. Uh, we're going to go email contacts. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to delete myself right here. Um, and we will go back to this. And I'm going to see this record, right? I get all this information. Now I don't want this contact, uh, next contact date. So just a little best practice here. I'm going to throw a red stop sign emoji into the title. Uh, and if we come back into um, Zapier here and we refresh it, you see you actually get that stop sign. Now, the reason that we're doing that is because this is what's called a formula field. So if I click and I edit this formula, we are taking the date, we're going to add to the date received variable 60 days. So that's what this formula is actually doing. So when I look at uh, one here for January 11th, right, 60 days later uh, is going to be March 12th. So um, this is just a formula. You don't want to try to edit any information here. You can't edit any information in here, right? It's, it's not possible. Um, and that's because you know, it's a formula field and not just an open text field. So that's why I put the stop sign in here. Um, so this is, again, just a, a, a hint of some best practices at, at X-Ray that we really focus on 
um, trying to make things really transparent between software. Uh, and in this case, right, Airtable is, it has a red stop sign field because, you know, we can't actually edit this. So anyway, uh, we have the email address, Tom at X-Ray, the name, uh, data, if it's available, um, the date, and then of course the, the email body. So I'm going to go ahead and test this action. Here we go. And there it is. It's right here. Um, and, and yep, this data showed up right here. So now how are we going to send an email 60 days later? Right? So, um, that's what this view is here. So you, you see there's two different views. Notice that there's a filter here and this filter is when next contacted date is today. So, um, you know, fast forward, uh, 60 days into the future, right? We have to, we have to still pick this up, right? Just like in, in the, the, the Zapier suggestion of creating a calendar invite or a calendar event and then having a secondary automation to then find and grab an action on that calendar event. We're doing something similar, except we're doing it in Airtable. So we're actually gonna place, you know, the first time that someone, uh, someone reached out, all that information inside of our Airtable base. And now we have a secondary view that will show all of the emails that uh, have a next action date of today. So for this tutorial, I'm actually going to modify things a little bit so that we can get something in here. Um, instead, I'm going to say, instead of is today, we can say is exact date. And I'll just cheat and grab this exact date uh, just, just for tutorial purposes, right? So is exact date, and I'll put that one right there. And there we go. So we actually have this email, right? scheduled for the future. Uh, so that was part one of the automation. Really simple, right? Just drop it into an Airtable base. We have a formula inside of this Airtable base that is calculating when the next uh, contact date is. And this is our second automation. So this is uh, the part two of this automation. And let's actually go in here and set up this trigger. So this trigger is for in the tutorial base emails contacted table and the view is people to contact and that is the view people to contact so in here we'll test this trigger oops let me go back here set up action test trigger and we're going to load more records and hopefully we have one more record in there Yay, we got it. So there's Tom and uh, there's the email and this is all the information, right? Uh, the, the third and um, the 11th here. Um, so all of this information from this row right here is now visible inside of uh, Zapier. So now the next action that we'll do just for simplicity purposes is gonna be a Gmail step. And we're going to send an email. And we're going to choose it for me. Continue. And then that too could be any information in here. So it could be to the email address, right? And uh, the from name, uh, we could just put uh, tutorial me. Um, and the body, right, for simplicity, just use the same email body. Um, and then, what am I missing here? Required fields. Oh, subject line. Um, always need that subject line. There we go. So now we're ready to continue. And test and review. And boom, success.
So we have successfully sent an email. So uh, just just putting a bow on this whole thing. What what you know, going from from point to point here. Uh, setting up an Airtable base with a formula field is going to help you get that future date that you want to perform an action on. So if you want it to be 60 days, if you want it to be 90 days, if you want it to be a thousand days, doesn't matter. You can do all of that logic inside of Airtable. And for you, if you're managing multiple events in the future, you really don't want to have a, a, a zap for every single future event. It's just really not practical. So in doing it this way with a part one and a part two of the zap, you're able to do all of the, the future events with two zaps instead of needing uh, an event for, for every single, or a, a zap for every single future event. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't know, part of our goal here at X-Ray Tech is to help save a billion hours of robotic time. Automations are the way that we're gonna do it. So as always, links and resources are in the description down below. And don't forget, keep the flow.